to our Tango Stride Seated Movement session. I'm excited to be here with you this afternoon. And uh, for those of you who are new, this was developed for my Tango Stride students and for people who might have mobility challenges and for who it might not be uh, so safe to stand and move, we wanna keep moving. So I encourage you to stay seated the whole time. That's what I'll be doing. Um, but of course you can determine if you feel like it's safe to stand and try some of these things standing up as well. Without further ado, let's jump on into it. So let's do our balloon guy. Now again, this is like at the used car dealerships or some businesses, some other businesses use them. Used car dealerships are businesses too. <laughs> um, so all their different businesses they'll use like balloon people and they're sort of flopping around in the wind and then all of a sudden they'll fill in and then let go and I like to use the music as my wind checking out my hair <laughs> I have a little vanity I guess right breathe in stretch as big as you can stomach and then up and out really helps me kind of do it with less effort so if we can move keep limber and not strain much to do it that's great right and then also if you have mobility challenges and it's hard for you to move your arms all the way out here that's fine just start from think from your core out and see how far you can go maybe one arm might be able to move uh, out bigger than the other that's fine we're not comparing we're just trying to see where am I at today and what can I do with that so ready breathe in and let it go. let's do one more like that so again think about filling in the center oh, my balloon guy is going crazy <laughs> all right The stream still going. It says it's still going, so I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. So we're back to our balloon guy. Hope it didn't cut out for you if you're watching this. All right, just one more out. And stretch as big as you can. Out here, or wherever you have them, here, wherever it is, let's think about opening our chest and as if we were on like against a wall here. Imagine you can go back through that wall, so reach your arms back. Ah, it feels nice. We can look up gently, we don't want to compress in your neck at all, so keep it long. So we're gonna, um, oh, I haven't done this with you guys yet, I think, but imagine you're holding like a tray. We're just gonna twist your whole upper body. This is something I use with my Tango students when we're talking about, uh, in my Tango Stride students, when we're talking about doing the, the center of the turn part. So you're trying to move from your waist up, and twist that, and your head just goes with you. You don't have to strain anything, try to get as far back as you can. That's, that's not what it's about, just getting a nice little twist. Or they say, let's go back again to the other side and then back. Um, they say that tango is like a massage to the organs and think a big part of that theory, or maybe even there have been studies done, there have been lots of studies about tango, but this twisting action is really good for our spine, it's really good for our organs, I'm going back the other way. So you could be doing this holding, one hand holding the other. 
Ah, let's do something for our shoulders, because I don't know about you, but I find myself kind of, you know, if I'm like looking at something intensely in front of me, or just from sitting down, you know, oftentimes our shoulders can kind of creep up. So let's try to, let's, let's actually exaggerate that. Let's bring our shoulders up to our ears. See if you can touch your ears with your shoulders. Now keep it gentle. I have to remind myself that, because I'm feeling almost like I'm pinching something in my shoulder from a movement I did earlier. Yeah, let that go. And then let's let our shoulders melt down. Just melt down. And then up, squeeze them up to your ears. And let them melt down. One more. Squeeze your shoulders up to your ears. And then let them melt down. And try to imagine that your shoulder blades are just moving down your back. How low can you do? But not low like this, right? Sitting nice and tall and low. Speaking of sitting nice and tall, let's get our sit bones a little readjust. You can scoot, you can hold on to your chair, but find a place where you're really sitting on top of your sit bones rather than kind of falling back. So right on top of your sit bones, stretching nice and tall. Let's think about that, your ribs like a bowl. We want to have that bowl going upward, like level. If you dip it too far forward, then you would spill whatever tango stride sauce or whatever sauce you have or liquid you have in your bowl. If you were to go back too far, then you would spill it backwards. Many of us are starting to spill forward if we're doing one of those two. So we want to keep it, keep your rib cage as if that's a bowl up, just facing upward. All right, and on top of that, we got our shoulder blades relaxing. Elbows back, like one of our students Ellie says, and then your crown up. Let's see if we can actually just shift weight on your sit bones. Now, if you were standing, you could do this standing as well. We just try to shift weight and keep that crown from falling off your head and your bowl from spilling. Actually, I was doing a class where we just started doing video classes like over Zoom or WebEx, you know, one of those like video platforms with my students and it was so nice to see them and see their movements and stuff. So they inspired a couple things. We were working with Steve. He got me going on this like let's let's fine tune them, fine motor skills. And I think that would be really useful for other people too. So let's as we're shifting weight, let's see if we can make it a smaller shift. So can you feel when you just shift your weight from one butt cheek to the other butt cheek? Really small and keep that crown all neck long, ears high, shifting weight. Let's take that same concept of small movement, like really subtle movement to our feet. So let's let's do one foot at a time and um, oh, I haven't said this yet today but I do encourage you to slow things down or speed up if you want to um, to suit how you're feeling or also find modifications for yourself if there's something I'm asking you to do and you know it's not quite working for you please modify and let me know too write me a comment or write me a message because I'd love to hear how you're modifying maybe it would be useful for other people I'll try to remember to offer modifications too and if you need a modification I'm not giving you one please let me know because I want to make it more and more useful as we go so let's try one foot at a time especially for those of you that are really working on trying to coordinate your movements and build that ability back up I think that it's or build that ability up um, not necessarily back uh, I think it's it can be helpful to do one foot at a time so let's start with the right foot and I just want you to it's not gonna be a big movement you probably wouldn't see it on the video so I'm gonna put my weight in my heel, my weight in my toes, my weight in my heel, my weight in my toes. Oh, then my neck, my shoulders collapsing. And that bowl starting to spill it, gotta get back up. So I'm just going heel, toes, heel, toes. Now can you make that a little bigger so you might put your weight on your heel and lift your toes. Put your weight on your toes, lift your heel. And again, just 
work with what you've got. So if for you, lifting your heel is really tough, then just focus on the kind of rocking back and forth motion. And even if you're not lifting your heel off the floor, that's something, just a shift, just a small shift. All right, for everybody, I want you to at least think about um, trying to make the movement bigger. So we're gonna go heel, toes, heel, toes. Can't tell if that's on the camera. I'm just going heel, whoop, heel, toes, heel. <laughs> so heel, toes. I'm trying to make it as big as you can. So I've definitely got students who, da da who can do a big movement, but making it more subtle and like fine motor can be tricky. So we're gonna work both those things. So heel, toe, heel, toe, as big as you can. You can play with the rhythm here a little bit, and fun milonga. And then let's try to start making that movement smaller and smaller. So from as big as you can, to smaller and smaller, just heel toe, heel toe, till you get to a place where your foot is pretty much staying on the floor and you're just shifting weight, heel toe, heel toe. So we went from really big movement to very subtle. Let's try that on the other side. So left foot, now I'm going heel toe, and I'm just, just like we started on the right, just in place, shift weight to your heel, to your toes. Heel, toes, toes in the ball of your foot. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Let's start making it a little bigger. Heel, toe, maybe you're rocking your foot a little bit. Starting to pick up your toes, pick up your heel. But focus on the part that's touching the floor heel toe rather than on the part that's lifting. So if your foot lifts because of this kind of rocking motion, great. All right, let's start making it bigger. And here goes the end of the song. <laughs> Get to as big as you can. Dun, dun. Heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. So as big as you can. Smaller, little by little. Ooh, kind of like the music just went a little quieter, quieter, quieter. We're trying to like crescendo, descendo? I'm not, I don't remember the, the other term. But you know, when you grow the sound and then when you make it smaller and smaller, quieter and quieter, we're kind of making our movement smaller and smaller or quieter and quieter. So you get to the point where you're just shifting heel toe, heel toe, pretty much without picking your foot up off the floor. So just a little challenge to coordinate. And since we're tapping our feet, let's do a little foot tap. And this could be, for some of you, maybe it's a scoot. For others, maybe you need to support your, your leg and, and move it. Let's do that. Let's do what, however you can. We're gonna do tap, tap your toes, and then bring them back. And back. So I'm back to my right foot again. So again, if you need to lift your leg, that's fine. If you're just scooting and then pulling, that's good too. Keep your foot on the floor. And we're just going tap and bring it back. So I'm going to give you different options based on your abilities because we've got we are blessed with people with all kinds of abilities here and I think that that just stretches us and gives us, you know, like amplifies the possibilities. But I love looking for what are the possibilities with all kinds of different skill levels, ability levels too. All right, and let's try the left foot. Now let's do the left foot tap and bring it back. And this is a pretty fast song, but you could slow it down. Tap, and then bring it back, and tap, and bring it back. All right, let's do, let's switch feet now, so back and forth. So we're going to go tap with the right, and bring it back, tap with the left, and bring it back. Now, if you're doing this, and you're like, this is really easy for me, then you could do it with your feet off the floor to engage your abs. You can hold on to your chair if that's helpful. Well, <laughs> talking and holding my feet off the floor and all this is a little challenging. So I'm switching right foot, left foot. 
Nice work. Um, all right, that's a lot of work with our legs. Maybe we can do something with our hands, too. I feel like we haven't, um, yeah, actually, let's, yeah, I feel like we haven't done some of these, like the prayer pose for a while, but before we do that, let's kind of do the um, heel toes, but now with the heel of our hand and then the fing our fingers and the, um, the base of the fingers, the, I don't know what that's called, upper palm? So the heel of your palm, let's see if we can bring your heel of your palms together. Now for my students who have suffered um, neurological conditions that have them really clenching their fists, or um, that have made, you know, like, uh, have made it hard for you to, to move your arm, like either there's a lot of tone or there's not much tone. Um, let's see if you can, let's start with just putting the heel of your palms together. So you can do this in your lap. Scoot for some sitting up. You can do this in your lap. You could, if you can lift your arms, then go ahead and bring the heels of your palms together, so kind of like a flower. All right, that might be work for you already. If it is, then I encourage you to focus on that because then you can work your way to the fingers. And then next, so you can stay with that, just pressing, and then let's press the heel of your palms together. You could bring it down for a little bit more of a stretch. I feel that here. If I go down far enough, I start feeling it under here too. So like a prayer pose, fingers together, but do as much as is feasible for you. I'll we'll check those shoulders. Let's shake our hands out. Let's do it the other way. So pointing the other direction. Let's go heels, heel of your palms together. Heels of your palms together. And then let's try to go up now. Whoa, check my shoulders. It's a good reminder for me. So I'm going up. Different direction of stretching. And speaking of different directions of stretching, what about doing the back side of our hands together? We can go up. Ooh, that's a nice stretch too. All right, we haven't done our roller coaster for a while, so let's do that. You're gonna hold hands either like this or you know whatever works for if you got to modify the hold or if this is available to you then you can uh, interlace your fingers and let's do a roller coaster start on one side and then go up and over now your roller coaster can be lots of different shapes so it doesn't have to be exactly like mine I do notice that when I do, I kind of slow it down and then go more, I try to like see how much I can bend my hands and my wrists. Let's do quickly the other, other lacing. A couple of times. And we are coming up on 20 minutes, so I wanna make sure we do our full body dance. body so I'm just gonna call it a body part and encourage you to dance however the music inspires you to do let me see if I can turn this up a little bit too all right let's dance with our head first so gentle gentle maybe try to find the ways in which you can stretch Let's do our shoulders. How about our knees?
that booty. How about your ankles? You do one at a time. You can lift your leg or keep your foot on the floor and dance with your ankles. Maybe toes on the ground and dance with your ankles. And yeah, I really enjoy it. It's all kind of sultry and dramatic like this. So it's called Ojos de Tango. I'm breaking things. Where were we? Heels? Or at least I'm dancing with my heels. I'm not sure if I said that. How about our fingers? feel like doing? How can they dance with this music? Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, and I hope that I will see you again next week. I hope you're taking good care of yourselves and each other. And let's do our big group hug to everybody that's doing this Tango Stride Seated Movement session with us. See you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.